Friends, welcome to the first Sunday after Christmas. I hope that your Christmas Day celebration was full of much joy and peace and hope in spite of all of the challenges of this time. We're going to begin our worship service today with a prelude done by choristers from Thomas More College. Our music director, Dan Parsley, is a teacher there. May this prelude prepare us to continue to celebrate this Christmas mystery.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God.
The Gospel reading appointed for today is from the first chapter of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who was close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. I have a confession to make. I am a Christmas person. I start looking ahead to the holidays around Labor Day. I watch Christmas in July movies in midsummer because I like them. I tend to buy and wrap lots of gifts because I get a lift from finding things that seem just right for my loved ones. Perhaps that's a form of addiction. Certain types of cookies need to be available to accompany my morning coffee. And don't get me started talking about how I decorate and sing holiday music to myself and watch the same things on TV year after year. Now, the dark side of such innocent sounding preoccupations is that it's easy for me to believe that I can make a Merry Christmas season by doing the right things as a holiday cheer can be controlled. Every adult listening to this sermon knows that this expectation is just wrong. For example, there was the year that our oversized live tree was pushed over by one small cat. We ended up tying the tree to a nearby banister with a day glow bungee cord. Or the year I envisioned decorating Christmas cookies while singing carols with our young daughters and their friends. 
all was idyllic until I had to leave to answer the phone. And in my absence, a powdered sugar fight erupted. Of course, our house was for sale and I had about an hour to clean it all up before a showing. Or the memorable time we had friends with two young children over for Christmas dinner and the youngest guest began to vomit at the dinner table. Come to think of it, I once spent Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with food poisoning after a holiday dinner at a restaurant. Ho, ho, ho. No, we cannot guarantee holiday bliss by careful planning. In fact, much in life is beyond our control. One thing that 2020 has taught us is that there is so much in life that we cannot control and that these surprises can break our hearts. Illness, death, financial hardship, separations from others, inability to worship in the flesh with others, loss of favorite activities, profound loneliness, and on and on. It will take us a long time into the future to feel that life is somewhat normal again. If we allow ourselves to give up the illusion of being in control of our lives, though, we can experience what God has in mind for us instead. Grace. Pastor and writer Frederick Beekner defines grace as follows. Grace is something you can never get, but can only be given. There's no way to earn it or deserve it or bring it about. People are saved by grace. There is nothing you have to do. There is nothing you have to do. There is nothing you have to do. The grace of God means something like, here is your life. You might never have been, but you are because the party wouldn't have been complete without you. Here is the world, beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Nothing can ever separate us. It's for you I created the universe. I love you. There's only one catch. Like any other gift, the gift of grace can be yours only if you'll reach out and take it. Maybe being able to reach out and take it is a gift too. Beekner suggests that good sleep and dreams, most tears, the smell of rain, somebody loving you, and you loving somebody are all examples of grace. For many of us this year, grace feels beyond our reach. The people we lost this year to COVID or other causes will not come back to life. The business we carefully nurtured is permanently shuttered. The vacations, the family gatherings, graduations and weddings couldn't happen. Our days became a blur of isolation and disappointment. We did the best we could, but it wasn't enough to change anything. We long for rescuing, but are not even sure what that would look like. Lord, have mercy on us. 
God knows what each of us needs at our core, though, and will provide. As Brother Keith Nelson explains, sometimes the things we wait for do not arrive. We seek, we suffer, and we trust. And in God's time, a gift does indeed arrive, but it is not at all what we imagined or hoped for. In its place, there stands a thing we needed so deeply that we could not name it aloud, even in our solitude even in the dark. We could not name it until it arrived, looked us in the face and changed everything. During the Christmas season, we remember that God's greatest gift, the saving grace to all suffering humans is Jesus. Most of Jesus' contemporaries couldn't recognize him as grace and truth in the flesh. And often we can't see that too. In today's gospel, John reminds us that grace and truth as seen in Jesus Christ reveal the nature of God. We have all received grace upon grace not because of who we are or what we have done, but because that is who God is today and will be in the future. Beekner would probably agree that love and hope and beauty and generosity and laughter and happy memories are all gifts from God nothing we ourselves earn, but sheer goodness that we need to claim as the divine gift it is. When we develop the ability to appreciate grace in everyday life, grace can nourish our souls. We need to be able to open our hearts to the possibility of grace and then we can begin to see it everywhere. Grace might be easy, easier to perceive during the holiday season because we are celebrating God's revelation to us fallible human creatures of who God is and who we ourselves can become. This divine love illuminates our lives every day even if we don't recognize it. A young child laboriously makes a Christmas card for us out of construction paper and crayons, and we can see grace shining from it. As we drive at night, we see a farmhouse decorated with a single string of lights in the middle of a field and we recall with a tear in the eye how the darkness has not overcome the light. Sitting at a holiday table laden with traditional family dishes, we recall those who are no longer physically present to us, but whose love lingers over time. All grace all gift, all promised by God to sustain us throughout our lives. And it will come again. We have God's word for it. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we spend this next wonderful and difficult year and the rest of our futures celebrating the fact that God is ever with us, loving us through it all. Amen.
And now, friends, let us affirm our faith, saying together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us bring before God our prayers, the longings of our hearts. Word made flesh, we once again discovered your presence among us this Christmas. In our loneliness and isolation, you broke in as you always do, through a card from an old friend, through a phone call from a sibling, through a story on the news about love given and received, through the people in our bubble who continue to support us. We thank you for continuing to work through the ongoing heroic efforts of so many frontline workers whose work is never done. O oh, word, be with us in our grief this Christmas. Be with us as we grieve the loss of so many traditions. Be with us as we grieve the loss of worshiping with each other. Be with us as we grieve the absence of those from whom we must keep our distance. And be with us as we grieve the absence of the beloved departed, especially those we name now. Word made flesh, make your presence known to those who are ill or are struggling in any way, especially Kim Anrine, Tom Helmick, Bill Hart, Shirley Hart, Josephine Caprino, Felix Winternitz, Mike Rutledge, Peg Fortuna, Roger Schell, Todd Baumgartner, Kenny Jones, Martha Sayer, Lisa Bernheisen, Coralie Hart, Wendy Jones, Matt Ruddle, Brandon Ferking, all suffering from the coronavirus, all teachers and students, and for your own concerns.
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Once again, it is a joy to be with you. Even if we can't be in the presence of one another, As I do every Sunday, I encourage you to share this worship service with somebody else. You never know when the word of God and the prayers of the people will touch somebody's heart. And as we do each Sunday, we also want to remember those who have celebrated significant birthdays or anniversaries. Today, remember Chris Alfieri, who turns 27, and to celebrate the anniversary of Jim and Susan Cranley, who 24 years ago were married. Let us pray. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he fall. And in his heart may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this Christmas and forevermore. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.